FA1 Part C Recording and Accounting for Credit Transactions Chapter 14 Purchase and Purchase Returns Day Books The topics that this presentation will cover are 1. What is the Purchase Day Book? 2. What is the Purchase Returns Day Book? 3. Entering Purchase Transactions in the Day Books 4. Coding Data 5. Posting the Day Book Totals 1. The Purchase Day Book lists all the invoices received from credit suppliers. It is a way to keep track of all the purchase transaction of a business. A business may receive a number of invoices in a month. It may be simpler to allow the invoices to build up, and pay the supplier with one payment at the end of the month, rather than pay every invoice when they occur. The double entry for purchasing goods on credit is Debit, Purchases Credit, Payables A business will not want to pay the invoice immediately, they will want to be able to hold on to the money for as long as possible. A credit supplier's terms will allow a certain amount of time to pay, so a business will take advantage of the terms, and pay the invoice close to the end of the allowed credit period. In order to do this, a business will need to have a record of the total purchases that are made, every month, quarter and year. If a business pays a supplier sooner than they need to, they may incur either of the following. Pay more interest on a larger bank overdraft, or Lose interest on a positive amount of cash. The function of the purchase day book is to record and summarize, the contents of the source documents, which are the supplier invoices. The purchase day book is a book of prime entry, also known as a subsidiary journal. For an example of a purchase day book, see page 283 of your interactive text study guide. Stop the lecture. Answer the questions on page 283 of your interactive text study guide. A debit note is issued from the business to a supplier, as a means to request a credit note. It means that the business thinks it owes less than what the supplier has recorded, and are requesting that their debt to the supplier be lowered. A supplier might also issue a debit note instead of an invoice, in order to adjust the amount of an invoice already issued. 2. The Purchase Returns Day Book, records all purchase returns in date order. It lists all the credit notes that were issued to the business by a supplier. It records the value of goods returned to a supplier by the business. These are some of the reasons that a business will return goods to a supplier. The goods that were purchased may be faulty or damaged. Goods that were bought on a sale or return basis, can be returned, if they can't be sold. The goods were ordered and are in a good condition, they have just become a surplus of the business. It is up to the supplier of the business whether he will accept them back as returns and issue a credit note for them. Stop the lecture. Answer the questions on page 284 of your interactive text study guide. 3. An expenses day book may be kept to record expense purchases, which are kept separate from purchases of inventory. Or purchases and expenses may be recorded into different categories in the day books. As with the sales day books, a spreadsheet can be used to produce an analyzed purchase day book. For an example of what an analyzed purchase day book looks like, see page 285 of your interactive text study guide. Note that in the purchase day book, the analysis columns records the purchases, excluding sales tax, VAT. How a purchase is analyzed, all depends on the nature of the business, and what forms part of their inventory. They will normally analyze their purchases by type of expense, and by type of inventory. To produce an analyzed purchase day book, a business may use a spreadsheet, in the same way that was done for the sales day book. Or a business can use a computerized accounting package, which includes analyzed day books, sales, and purchase day books. 4. The importance and the types of coding, were dealt with in Chapter 12. You may want to go back to that chapter and refresh your memory. In a purchase system, the most common uses for codes are Supplier account number, where each supplier account is given a unique number. It could be set up so that the location of the supplier can be identified. Product or service number, which can be used to identify a product or service. 
By being able to identify different products or services, it enables a business to build controls when posting to the general ledger. Purchase Invoice Sequence Numbers Sequential numbering of purchase invoices may be used, in addition to the other coding systems to ensure completeness, and to help prevent fraud. 5. The daybook totals are posted in the general ledger to The total payables control account The sales tax, VAT, control account And the relevant purchases and expenses accounts The expenses accounts could include Capital expenditure, non-current assets, accounts, and accounts used for the expenditure of the business, for example, administrative expense the process for writing up the purchase day book is the same as the process used to write up the sales day book. See Chapter 12, if you are unsure as to the necessary processes. A business will want to know what amount it owes, to whom, and when. So a business will have individual accounts for each supplier. These accounts are memorandum accounts, which means, they are not part of the double entry. When a business makes a purchase on credit, from a supplier, the double entry is debit, the purchases account, for example, inventory, or the expenses account, for example, office supplies, or the non-current asset account, for example, office equipment, and credit, the total payables account. In most businesses, businesses which are sales tax, VAT, registered, part of the amount that is due to the supplier is input sales tax, VAT which is charged by the supplier to the business. Input tax is a decrease in the liability to pay sales tax, VAT, to the authorities. So the double entry is Debit, the purchase or expense account Debit, the sales tax, VAT, account And credit, the total payable account When a business returns goods, the transaction, or part of it, needs to be reversed. So the double entry to record it is Debit, the total payable account Credit, the sales tax, VAT, account And credit, the purchases or expense account In some computer-based accounting systems, the payables ledger is integrated with the general ledger. So the totals of the individual accounts for each supplier, makes up the total payables, and there is no separate total payables control account. This is the end of chapter 14. What will follow next is the quick quiz. After the quick quiz, do the online questions for part C, chapter 14. It will be good practice, because the online questions are set out like the exam that you do at the end of the course. They will also test your knowledge of this chapter. Quick quiz. Question 1. What is the purchase day book used for? Question 2. What does the purchase returns day book do? Question 3. What is the double entry for a credit purchase? Question 4. What is the double entry where the credit purchase includes sales tax, VAT? Question 5. What is the double entry for purchase returns with sales tax, VAT? After doing the quick quiz, do the online questions for Part C, Chapter 14. Do the questions until you achieve 80%. Replay the lecture as needed.